What if everything you've been taught, right and wrong, good and evil, is just a game of mere illusion? What if every moral compass you've ever used was broken? A tough question, isn't it? Today we're taking a close look at Friedrich Nietzsche. He's a guy from the 19th century who asked the tough questions everyone else avoided. When many were losing faith and feeling lost, Nietzsche said, don't just follow, lead. You know that itch in your mind, questioning if there's more to life's big questions? Stick with us. By the end, Nietzsche might just hand you the map you've been searching for. Imagine being a young boy, the son of a Lutheran pastor, living in a small German town. You grew up with hymns and biblical verses as your bedtime stories, instilling in you a sense of purpose and moral compass. That was Friedrich Nietzsche. His father was not just a pastor, but his first window into the world of faith and moral values. But life had a different lesson plan for him. When he was just five, Nietzsche faced life-altering tragedies. His father died, followed shortly by his younger brother. You'd think, okay, where's God in all this? And that's precisely what rattled Nietzsche. He started questioning the very faith that was supposed to comfort him. These early heartbreaks didn't make him bitter. They made him curious, sparking questions that most of us avoid. What is the meaning of suffering? Why do we believe what we believe? His life could have spiraled into despair, but instead, he chose inquiry. If you're stuck in life's challenges, remember Nietzsche. Instead of surrendering to circumstances, he questioned them, transforming his struggle into a lifelong quest for truth. You know, the kind where you pivot from one direction to another because something deep inside says, this isn't me, sounds scary, but it's also liberating. Friedrich Nietzsche himself had a colossal shift like this. He started in theology, but made a U-turn and plunged into philology. Why? Because he questioned, doubted, and most importantly, he listened to himself. Now you might think, okay, great for Nietzsche, but how does this relate to me? Well, consider this. Nietzsche once said, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. What's your why? Are you studying something, working somewhere, or even in a relationship that doesn't resonate with your true self? Nietzsche's bold move teaches us it's never too late to recalibrate our lives. It's about aligning your actions with your why, guys. If you've got that nagging feeling that you're not on your true path, take a leaf out of Nietzsche's book. Don't be scared to ask the hard questions and make that pivot. Your why is waiting for you, and it's about time you meet. Remember in our last video on how to master your emotions? Emotional mastery is all about finding your why, your own code of living that you sculpt for yourself. Imagine quitting your steady job to chase a calling you can't ignore. That's Nietzsche for you, who left a promising academic career due to an inner disquiet and relentless health issues. Rather than feeling defeated, he embraced a nomadic life, moving from the Swiss Alps to the Italian Riviera, seeking relief and solitude. Despite hardships, he penned transformative works like Human, All Too Human, and Thus Spoke Zarathustra, redefining our ideas of good, evil, and self. If you're keen on exploring Nietzsche's life-changing philosophy, catch the movie When Nietzsche Wept. It delves deep into his thought-provoking ideas. You know how sometimes it feels like society's rules and norms are like invisible strings pulling us in directions we didn't even choose? Well, Nietzsche just walked up and snipped those strings with three explosive words. God is dead. Now hold on, don't panic. He wasn't celebrating. He was dropping a truth bomb. In a world where the traditional guideposts of morality, like religion, were losing their grip, Nietzsche was saying, hey, we've got a vacuum here. Let's not let it suck us into chaos. Sounds heavy, right? But here's where it gets interesting. Nietzsche warned us not to slide into nihilism, to not just throw our hands up and say, well, nothing matters. Imagine you're a painter standing before a blank canvas. You've got all the colors you need, but instead of creating your own masterpiece, you imitate others because society told you their art is the standard. Now, what if we told you that Nietzsche encourages you to toss those borrowed colors away and paint with your own unique hues? That's the essence of the Ubermensch or Overman. The Ubermensch isn't about being a superhuman or a hero in a cape. 
It's about breaking free from society's shoulds and musts and living life by your own values. Why do we need such a figure, you might ask? In a world where we're tempted to follow the crowd, the Ubermensch serves as a vivid reminder that you are your own best guide. Nietzsche famously said, because who you are, the Ubermensch is that spark inside you, urging you to seize the reins of your own destiny, be it in love, career, or personal growth. Again, if you're a movie buff and you want to dive deeper into this concept, take a look at Fight Club. It's a gritty, no-holds-barred look at breaking societal norms to discover your true self. You know that feeling when you're so abandoned in a task that you lose track of time? When you're so focused, it feels like you're turning into a hidden frequency, cutting through life's static. Well, Nietzsche called this the will to power. But don't get it twisted. This isn't about becoming a superhero or some high-ranking official. It's about channeling that raw inner energy into becoming the best version of yourself. Picture it like this. Imagine you're steering a ship through a storm. The wind is howling. The waves are crashing. In that moment, you're not thinking about dominating the sea. You're about conquering your own fear, mastering your own skills to navigate through the chaos. That's the will to power. This relentless drive to shape your own destiny. Nietzsche once said, you must still have chaos in oneself to give birth to a dancing star. So if you're looking to unlock that dancing star within you, there's a book we'd recommend. The Will to Power by Friedrich Nietzsche himself. It's not a feel-good, quick-fix type of read, but it digs deep into this transformative concept. Remember, the power you seek isn't out there, it's in you. Take the helm and set your course. The last chapter of Nietzsche's life is as haunting as it is instructive. Imagine a man who spent his entire life defying norms and challenging the status quo. Yet, in a turn of irony, he breaks down emotionally upon seeing a horse being flogged in the streets of Turin. He runs to the horse, throws his arms around it, as if to absorb the creature's suffering. Silent tears are the noblest, Nietzsche once said. And in that moment, he shed his own silent tears. But why did this episode shatter him? Wasn't he the man who glorified the will to power, even the harsh realities of life? It's like life was testing his own philosophy. He spent his last years in a near catatonic state, finally succumbing to a stroke at 55. The tragic irony is hard to overlook. A man who urged us all to become our best selves struggled in his own quest. So, let this be a lesson for us. Pursuing your authentic self is a courageous act, but it's also fraught with challenges that could break you. Yet, it's a journey worth taking. There's a soul-stirring movie, A Beautiful Mind, that captures the essence of intellectual brilliance played by mental decline. Give it a watch. It's a tearjerker and an eye-opener. Ah, the legacy of Friedrich Nietzsche. Complex and transformative, yet contentious. His ideas didn't really blow up until after he passed away. But when they did, they were like a wildfire in a philosophical forest. On one hand, you've got thinkers and artists inspired by his call to embrace one's deepest desires and shape one's destiny. They viewed him as a liberator from stale traditions and limiting beliefs. On the flip side, there's a darker chapter. His writings have been twisted by folks with dangerous agendas causing ripples of controversy that still haunt his reputation today. Nietzsche said, He who fights with monsters should be careful, lest he thereby become a monster. The irony is that some turned his philosophy into a monster he never intended. If you're curious to delve deeper into Nietzsche's influence on culture, both good and bad, we'd recommend picking up Nietzsche, Philosopher, Psychologist, Antichrist by Walter Kaufman. This book helps unpack the layers, the nuances, and the misinterpretations of Nietzsche, giving you a fuller picture. All right, let's think about this. Nietzsche gives us a lot to chew on, right? Is it even possible to aim for being the ubermensch without becoming totally self-centered? And if we ditch the usual rules of right and wrong, how do we figure out how to live a good life? These are big questions, and Nietzsche leaves them open for us to think about. He's basically saying, hey, it's your turn to think hard about this stuff. His ideas aren't a set recipe. 
they're more like a mix of ingredients. You decide what works for you. So why not take the plunge, dive into his books, and question what you've always believed? If you're in for some serious self-improvement, hit that subscribe button on Growth Getters. Let's take on the challenge to become our best selves.